So I've got my project and I'm going to go back to the Amazon App Store. Now I did make up all of that information last time but I wrote it down so I can log back into it. Hopefully you did too because if you didn't, I don't know how you're going to get back into it. You're going to need to create a new account and that's okay because this is all fake. But you can go over to developer.amazon.com Remember, this is our portal for us as a developer. Developer.amazon.com. You can click Sign In. And even though it was fake information, I wrote it down. So I will be able to log in, and you should log in as well. I'm going to continue with these notes. I'm going to put another notepad file later on in the day. This is continuing our Amazon App Store listing. So I don't quite remember what happened, but there was a lawsuit, as there always is in that Apple sued Amazon, it was either Apple sued Amazon or Apple sued Google, about the term App Store. Because Amazon claim, or Apple claimed that they have a, a, a right or a copyright to the word App Store. So I don't remember how it went played out in the courts, but technically, okay, maybe, yeah, App Store. But App Store is different, and I think that one was okay. That's also happening actually with Comic-Con. Have you heard of that? San Diego Comic-Con is suing other Comic-Cons for them using the word Comic-Con. Well, that's if you call your con something something Comic-Con, no space. Comic-Con, San Diego Comic-Con will sue you. But if you call your con Comic Space Con, you should be okay. <laughs> Same thing with this App Store that I'm talking about. Uh, Apple has their Apple App Store, iTunes App Store, whatever they're calling it now. So we're, look, we're working with Amazon App Store, but not Amazon App Store, Amazon App Store. So remember that, you don't want to get sued. So what, what we're going to do here is we're logging back in and we need to, our final tab here, final tab before upload, which is App Assets, Multimedia. So we're going to need a variety of graphics. And I know a couple of people uh, have gone forward and created the, the assets and all of that. And I've seen that a couple of people have actually published uh, their apps. So we have at least a couple of fully published app developers in the class. Congratulations. We're going to get there eventually. So what we need to do is create these assets. The, uh, the, the way we do it is I, I logged in to my developer console, and I need to go to the App Store. I guess if they call it Amazon App Store, one word, they're OK. Actually, no, they're calling it App Store here, aren't they? Well, I don't know what happened to that lawsuit, but I heard that Apple sued them. So let's go into this Amazon App Store. Developer console. Uh, they move, they change this up a little bit, I guess. Developer console. There we go. So from wherever you're at, you can click developer console. At the bottom, mine says here that I've still got this app that has not been fully published. You can click on your uh, app store name there, or your, app, your app's name there. In my case, I've got five out of six complete. And the, the part that's incomplete that takes a little while is the images in multimedia. So I can go to the images in multimedia tab. I'm going to make a note of this in my notepad file because we need to create all of these graphics. So we're going to spend some time in, in Photoshop creating some of these items. We need a small icon, which is 114 pixels by 114 and it says ping transparency so when we get into Photoshop that'll basically be a ping 24 profile remember a while ago when we created our graphics for the actual app 
uh, we worked with Photoshop and we saved a splash screen and an app icon. And we used the profile, the export profile, Ping24. I also then need to create a large icon, which will be 512 by 512. Also ping with transparency. At least three screenshots required. This one we can do something, we can do pretty creative things here when we get to this. So at least three screenshots, up to 10. And these dimensions here, these are guidelines of either portrait or landscape. So we've got a portrait, uh, no, we've got a landscape 800 by 480 or a 1024 by 600 or, this is not that all of these are required. These are the, are the dimensions, but you need three of them, meaning you can provide three screenshots of this dimension <coughs> or three screenshots of this dimension. It's not that you have to do three of all of these dimensions. So we're going to have portrait, and we're going to have at least 480 by 800 pixels. And this says ping or JPEG, but I would recommend ping. Ping often will give you a better visual quality depending on your graphics. They will be larger files, but that's OK. They're going to be uploaded to Amazon's infinite space, so we don't care. We're going to upload them as high quality as possible. So the reason I'm writing down one for the moment is all of these other sizes, depending on your assets also, you may be able to create them easily or not. Remember when we talked a, a while ago about creating these app assets for the actual um, app, we, I had said, if you start with a small image and blow it up, it'll lose quality. If you start with a larger image and shrink it down, it won't lose quality the same way. So if you're trying to create one of these huge kinds of graphics, but you're starting with icons that are already small, and you blow them up, they will look terrible. So at the very least, having the smallest size should be enough. And this one can be actual footage, I'll say, quotes, footage of your app, or creative advertisements of your app. So we can create, I'll show you how to take a screenshot of your device. Uh, whatever is on screen. And we can just take some screenshots of what's happening on screen and upload those if they're the right dimensions. Or we can also use these screenshots as a way to further advertise. For example, if I simply search as an example here on Amazon, looking at the App Store, you can get inspiration from other people's um, app. So just randomly here, all in one social media with lock. I want to see how they did it. They've got their icon. Okay, they use the screenshots as photos of their app, like that. So you don't have to literally take screenshots right out of your app. You can be creative in this way, showing photos with your app running, something like that. This one is obviously photoshopped. Where's her shadow? On the tablet. But this is something that we can do. We can grab a, a photo that has a device. You know, this is an iPad, and they're trying to sell an Android app, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> and then we can superimpose our app into a, into a photo of someone holding a device and put our app into it. So this is what I'm saying about the second way and here they're giving free advertising to LinkedIn on an iPhone. No wonder they've got two stars. <laughs> so here's, here's one way to, to do this. Let's see another example. Randomly looking over here. One star app. 
how did they do it? So they've got they've got it like this. Okay, so they've got this sort of style where they've got a device, they've got their app superimposed in it, they've got a little text. Or the opposite over here. They've got their app superimposed in a in a photo of a device and some text. So when you see here the requirement of screenshot, you don't have to literally just show shots right out of your, your app. You can get a little artistic and create something like this. So this one is more in line of actual footage from the from the app, and don't tell me that there is a completely blurry image that they uploaded there. So again, you're going to learn all the secrets, such as don't upload blurry photos, like that. So uh, just making the notes here, uh, actual footage of your app, taking the screenshot, I'll show you how to do that in a moment, or creative advertisements of your app, which require then for you to use Photoshop or some sort of graphic software and get the right dimensions and put together graphics. We'll look at that in a bit. Recommended, but I'm going to require it. Promotional image. 1024 by 500. Landscape only. And again, I'll say that one as a ping. Only the small icon and large icon need transparency these two no. no transparency and videos um, we're, we don't really have the capability to, to do videos here we do have a video editor installed in the lab um, but you still have to create the footage so with video optional and I recommend some formats here you don't even have to really worry about this any camera any recorder any editor will make this type of video pretty automatically so you don't have to worry about that but at least minimal HD quality 720p your camera or other editor probably already captures in 1080p or 4k so video is optional and what that can be also is a mini commercial for your um, for your app a how to video like how do you how does it work uh, pressing the buttons and showing what it is and um, just any creative video to promote the app. I'll note here that you can use, you can uh, screen record uh, many devices, many Android devices if you've got the right software. So just for the notes, use Team Viewer software. To project your Android to your computer that works on Windows or Mac then use open broadcast software to record what you do on the Android there's another one for 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 iOS I believe it's called Air Viewer or something like that. I have to look it up. But you see, it's kind of a setup. You have to use Team Viewer, which you install on the computer and the Android device. You sort of then pair them and connect them, and you can broadcast what your Android device is doing and see it on your computer. Well, OK, you're seeing it. But then to record it, you use Open Broadcast Software, which is what I use to record my lectures. It records everything off of my screen. So couple of pieces of software and setup, but you would be able to record everything that you're doing on your Android device. 
and then you've got a video that you could also upload to this. So it's a lot of setup, but it might be interesting to uh, have a video that promotes your app where your competitor doesn't. Uh, because marketing and perception and is very important on any app. You might have a, uh, you know, your, uh, your competitor might have a better quote-unquote app than you, but if you can market it better, you can promote it better, you can get it out to more people, you're the one that could get the hype and the virality and the, and the profits. And we've got these other assets. Um, these are required if you're going to have your uh, your app uh, running also on a Fire TV. So you don't actually have to do these, even though they've got the little red check mark. These are if you're going to have your app running on that kind of device. So you can skip these actually. So the way that we can actually create something here again I can give you assets and guide you to create these but I would be giving you my graphics for my app you'll want your own graphics for your own app in the network folder from I guess I didn't save it there but okay let me put it right now I can give you the graphic that I used for my uh, my project. I'm going to put these into the MAD3 folder. These are the graphics for that uh, for that little character wearing the bunny ears. You can use that if you want. So we'll open up Photoshop and we'll play with these for a moment. If you go back to the network folder, you can find Icon 512 and Splash 960. You can copy those to your desktop or flash drive, and then we'll open the first one there, Icon 512. is going to open up in Photoshop Elements if you just double click it so you don't want elements if Photoshop Elements opens up if you see eLive quick guided and expert you're in Photoshop Elements you don't want that you want regular old Photoshop so I guess go to your start menu and launch Photoshop uh, 2015 and then open icon 512 So most likely this year they, they will do it again, but if you don't have any of the Adobe Suite during Black Friday time, Adobe does have a Black Friday sale on Adobe products, you can get like 20% off of the regular price. Uh, definitely for new users, I'm not sure if you're renewing. That might be something to look into if you are interested in getting Photoshop or... Adobe Animate or Adobe uh, Acrobat and all of that. They do have a Black Friday sale. I think it lasts a whole week. So it's coming up soon. You could look into that. I think even on the student discount or educational discount, I think they even include it uh, on that. Now it's just a one year, 20% off, then it renews to the regular price. I'm going to open the file. If you get something about new library, you can cancel that. Don't worry about it. And eventually I get this, this graphic where we had our introduction to Photoshop before, you can make any changes you'd like. But the big idea is that 
based on this graphic, this is going to be one of the assets that I upload. Amazon asks, remember, for the 114 by 114 ping. So let's say I'm going to change this up a little bit. So with whatever you have, then we can go to File, Export, Save for Web. And here we will choose the 114 size with transparency so we can use as one of our first assets. So obviously, you'll want to take more time to create a good graphic to advertise your, uh, your app. But for the moment, just to have something, I'm going to File export save for web. And this is a little large for the first one that it asks for. You need 114. So 114 tab. After you press tab, then it'll give you the preview that it'll shrink down. We want the preset on the top right to say ping 24 which should select transparency. So it required a, a ping with transparency. I'm going to save that. Call it icon 114. So I have a graphic to use here. I can uh, click the button or I can just drop the graphic in. And I want to upload that, that graphic that I just made. This is the example where, because we're going to be working with the graphics outside of Amazon and trying to use Amazon, this is most likely when it's going to log you out. I think it's only like a five minutes that it leaves you logged in unless you do anything. So you'll probably have to log in a couple of times. And go back to that screen and probably for myself for this to work best I will upload one of the graphics and then click save and then I can go back to edit the screen because if I try to add all of these at once and I'm spending time in Photoshop and trying to come back it's gonna log me out and I'm gonna have to re-upload all of them because I never clicked save so I'm gonna upload that first image I'll click save not the save and localize, but a save. So it's going to still ask me for these other required ones. So I need the 512 pixel sized one. That original graphic is already that size. So I can just file export for web. It's already 512 and save it as that size. So in some portions in the Amazon App Store, when people are searching and finding icon or apps, uh, 
uh, you will, they will see this icon, and at other times they will see the higher quality one. And also when they're right on their device and browsing the App Store, they get different versions of these icons. So it asks for a small one and a large one. Part of the purpose as well for the screenshot is to convince people why would I download that app. So I can simply show the, the screenshots of what I'm doing on the device or make the ads. Let me show you how you can create screenshots. Um, you can do it several different ways. Um, one way that doesn't require anything extra but is still cumbersome is um, so how to create screenshots in Android. So built in capture. Most Android devices when you're looking at any screen you can hold the power uh, the volume down button and the power button might take a little practice but if you press both of them at once for a moment that was a screenshot so that takes a, a screenshot of everything on the screen so if you're running your app if you're running your um, your CBDB app and you, you press and hold volume down and power at the same time it will take a screenshot well after that you have to get that file off of the phone onto the computer with the cable for example I'll show you a couple of other ways so built-in capture volume down plus power hold them saves a screenshot file. Then open computer on the desktop, browse to the devices folders, and get the file. So on my testing device, I could have CBDB running, and then volume down and power. That took a screenshot. Then I have to go over to Windows and open Computer. And my device If my device is fully set up, it should then appear listed here. So this is a possible way. I, I think it's it's cumbersome. I'm going to show a couple of other ways because I have to switch between two different modes, and every device is different. So I might show you do this, but it's on this particular phone. Then you've got the tablets and different things to do, so it might not work exactly. But here, then, the, this device is recognized, and I guess I can open it up and browse the, wherever the photos are being saved. Somewhere. If you've got the volume up, you might hear one. But if you see a flash on the screen, that was the screenshot. I had to browse around a bunch of. Um, I had to br browse around into a bunch of different um, folders, and then eventually, I found my screenshot. So that's what I was looking at on my phone. 
part of the problem also with screenshots right out of your phone is that it, it depends on your phone. This one is uh, 540 by 960, which is not one of the dimensions that it accepts here. It accepts um, 480 by 800. So my screenshot doesn't fit into the sizes that they want. If only there was a way to somehow edit graphics. Photoshop. So that screenshot that I took there, I can open it in Photoshop and resize it a bit. So that photo <coughs> that I took there, now it captured everything, also the, the buttons of the interface, and up there the time and everything that may or may not matter to you. But I have got one screenshot of my, of my uh, device. I could use it as is when I try to do export, say, for web, this is where I've got the part where I can resize it. I probably have to turn off the check mark because this asks for uh, 480 by 800. At least the graphic is larger than what it's asking for because remember, if we start with a small graphic and blow it up, it'll lose quality. Here we're starting with a graphic that is larger dimensions, resizing it down. This could be one of the screenshots. Hey, look, my app has a login screen. Not that exciting, but showing off other aspects of the, of the app, I would recommend create an account, save a few uh, comics, uh, retrieve it to show the photo or the barcode scanner, uh, get at least three screens on your device that show off what the app does, and then we can screenshot them. If it's a little tricky, here's a couple of other ways to do screenshots. We have also use Google Chrome Remote Debug. Remember, we talked about this a couple of uh, sessions ago, I guess, that we can use Google Chrome to look at the device as it's running. If you're running, however, the um, the release version, you might not be able to see it. Let me see how it looks on mine. So uh, remember, in Chrome, we can F12 and then pull up the three-dot menu. More tools remote devices and down here it shows okay you've got your particular device connected you can click on that I've got my app running inspect that and I can see it there well I'm seeing it in on my computer, I can press on the keyboard print screen above the insert and home keys and all of that. I can press print screen and then I can paste that into Photoshop. So this is also involved. Use Google Chrome remote debugging to see the screen. Then press print screen on your keyboard. Then in Photoshop, paste the graphic. You'll have to do still a lot of editing and cropping because this print screened the whole screen, not just my device, but everything in Chrome. So I, I did print screen right here. In Photoshop, I can go to File, New. It already kind of knows what dimensions I captured. Paste. So it captured everything. It captured even the Windows screen down here and everything. So that's not a perfect solution either, but using the Photoshop tools, I can crop out the parts I don't want.
Yeah, Windows sniping, snipping tool, we can use that too. The problem is it's still not even going to be the right dimensions that uh, Crow, uh, that the App Store asks for. Um, so n none of these are perfect solutions because these dimensions. My the problem is because my particular phone has a dimensions that don't quite line up with the one that Amazon wants. Uh, I think the tablets have better dimensions than my testing device. So, on the notes here, uh, then in Photoshop, paste the graphic, then crop it as necessary. And then resize and save. Another one right here, use Windows Snipping Tool. So this one also requires that you see your device on screen, so it's also the Google Chrome tools. That's in your start menu if you search for snipping. So you get this, this tool here that will let you uh, capture the screen <coughs> exactly there. So you draw a little box what you want to keep. And that gives you the way to save a file. I probably still want to uh, resize it and do some tweaks in Photoshop. It doesn't tell me at all what those dimensions are. It does give it to me in a PNG format. That's good. But out of curiosity, this is only 370 by 576 completely the wrong size. And if I try to resize that in Photoshop, it's going to look really blurry and bad. So that's in my case, because also my monitor is different than your monitor. Most likely, when you try it, it'll be better, because my monitor dimensions are smaller, just so that it fits on the projector. On your own uh, computers, you, you do have higher quality monitors. Here's another way. Use the Android monitor app to take a screenshot. We have this uh, special hidden app that gets installed when you install Visual Studio, which lets you monitor various aspects of an attached Android device. Uh, but also one of the things it can do is to stay, is to take screenshots. So whatever's on the screen, it can capture exactly what you're looking at. So this one might be the most direct way to do it. It's just that the app is pretty hidden. So I'll write it in the notes, but here's where the app is. Let's check out the Android monitor. So whatever you're doing, you can minimize. Okay, so Bob and Jet, you might want to watch this first before losing track here. So if you go over to your computer window, and then let's go into the local disk, and then let's go to program files. We have Android. Let's open the Android folder. Oops, why is that empty? Okay, let's look in the program files x86. Android, yeah, there it is. So in the program x86 folders, Android, Android SDK, Tools, you have an app here called Monitor. 
monitor.bat. You can double click it. Probably get a pop up screen for a moment. Just keep waiting. And eventually, what should pop up is a screen here. I minimized everything before I went to this folder. Because if you have other apps loaded up, this probably appeared behind your app. And there's no indication of it down here that that app is running. So if you don't see that, if you're waiting and waiting and waiting, you still don't have that little screen, move your screens out of the way because it should be there. Thanks for using the Android SDK. You can just proceed. And that'll open this up. A lot of complex stuff happens here, but this shows my Motorola device is running. If you select it, you have a spot right here to take screenshots of exactly what's on the phone. So what's exactly on my phone is right here. This is not live. I cannot click anything here to make it do anything. And if I change screens here, it does not change automatically there. I have to refresh it. And then what I could do is um, click Save. So this is another way we can uh, capture directly off of the device with this monitor, Android monitor. But it's hidden in there. I'm going to save the link to that app in the notes. I, I'm going to put these notes in the network folder a little later. So open. The folder, run the app. Click device at left, and click camera icon. Refresh to take screenshots. and then save the file. So this way does give you some of the highest quality screenshots right out of your phone. Trying to do print screen and all of that most likely is going to lose some quality. This is like connecting right to the phone and like sending the pixels right to the device, right to your computer. So here I'm looking at my sign up screen and I can click save so I'm gonna save uh, screen I would recommend to save screenshots this way it even gives it a, a file name with the date and time again because of my particular device the resolution it's a lower end device and the and the dimensions are not what Amazon is asking for again if I look at what I just captured out of the monitor it's 540 by 960 so I have to resize it in Photoshop but I'm starting with a larger graphic because it needs 400 by uh, by 800 uh, what is it it's for 480 by 800. So what the monitor captured was higher quality. That's good. Which then I have to resize in Photoshop, and then I've got a screenshot that I can upload to Amazon. So I need at least three screenshots. I could take the screenshot that I just made and resize it to these dimensions, but I wouldn't and you shouldn't because then if you're trying to resize it, resize it to larger than what you have it's going to look blurry and weird and unprofessional. The way uh, to create the advertisements 
you could search online for something like uh, like Google Pixel phone image. You could borrow one of these one of these graphics somewhere and, and download it and open it in Photoshop and put your app in that little screen and use that as as your app's screenshot for school purposes, for educational purposes, that might be fine. But copyright-wise, it might not be the best thing to do if the photo is copyrighted. If you're doing this for a real device, I mean a, a real app, um, I think you can go to Google, to Google Pixel homepage themselves, and I think they've got like official graphics you can use in the media in the media kit. You can go to Samsung or LG or whatever. Uh, many of these companies give out like official high quality versions of their graphics. And you you know if you if they give this graphic as a downloadable graphic, you could then use it perhaps as a uh, as a template to put your app into into Photoshop So I searched Google Pixel image template, and here's people putting out download source. So here's people putting out the, the graphics as mockups in Photoshop format. You can borrow that and then put your own, uh, uh, put your own graphic into it. So you see, I can uh, give uh, some tips and tricks and that sort of thing, but it's going to be up to you for you to create this stuff. So as for uh, one of the assessments for this class, what we're going to do is today is going to be an assessment day in that I'm going to end the main lecture and we'll have time to work today. And at any point when you're done with this, you need to show me that you have filled out all of these tabs and created these assets. You don't have to click the Submit button. Probably logged me out already, but you don't have to click the Submit button if you don't want to, but I want to see and check off that you uh, filled out all of those screens, including those graphics, so you'll have the rest of the day to get creative and make those graphics, or to struggle and make those graphics. And uh, you'll call me over, and I'll check you off. And if I see you've got all those items, you get one of the assessments for this month. So you don't have to submit it, but I want to see all of those tabs filled out. Um, technically, you don't need the app fully signed and all of that, um, because the app won't really be submitted. But I'd like to see it completed as much as possible for you to get the full credit. Question. The video is optional. Though, right? The video is totally optional, yes. Uh, I wish I could give extra credit, but sure. <laughs> so we'll end the lecture at this point. If you didn't need any help, uh, call me over, help each other. Uh, when you're done with it, call me over. I'll check you off that all those tabs are filled in. And then if you're done with that, you can continue to uh, refine your app.